Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to St. Anne's. My name is Donna. I'll be your lector for this liturgy as we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We're always grateful for your presence as we gather as a community of faith and prayer, and we thank you. We are called by God to a life filled with love and grace, a love that we express in all that we do, in all that we are, and through our neighbors who cross our paths in life. Our celebrant and homilist today is Father Mike. Good morning. Let us begin our Mass with an opening hymn, Christians Let Us Love One Another, number 486. Please stand. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's grace, peace, and love be with each of you. My friends, I often think that probably one of the worst sins that we commit is not a sin that we talk about enough, and that is taking for granted. Whenever you take someone or something in you for granted, you hurt the other person, and you hurt yourself from enjoying the goodness of that other person. So as we begin this Eucharist, let us ask ourselves if we get into the habit of taking those we love for granted, or our health for granted, or our faith for granted. Lord Jesus, teacher of justice, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh 
Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money and money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak is his only covering that he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith has gone forth, and faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord.
And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple of weeks ago, when we heard the gospel, we heard the gospel of an invitation to come to celebrate a wedding feast. But the people didn't come. And not only did the master become upset, but they missed out. It was something that comes with celebration, something that makes us forget the mundane and the ordinary. Well, this week, Jesus not only told the story of then, but he tells the story of now. He says, come to the banquet of two feast days, the feast of all saints and the feast of all souls. He says twice in that story, come to the feast. We Americans don't celebrate well. Like many of the other countries, there are so many holidays and holy days the people have special foods for. Families get together. They enjoy, they rest, they renew, and life takes on a different hue. But Americans, we go and we go and we go, and sometimes we just feel like overwhelmed. Holidays, holy days. I remember years ago when I was a kid, Sunday, nobody worked. The stores closed. You didn't even mow the lawn on Sunday because we needed that day for family. We needed that day to unwind, to be prepared for the next week and the challenges that we would face. So celebrations are very important. And again, Americans need to think in terms of why we don't. The church made a mistake, started calling holy days Holy days of obligation. Holy days of celebration. Celebration means that I take a truth and I remember it and I do something because I am grateful for it. So I celebrate at home with my family or even with myself because it's a special day. When I was at upstate, I lived in Toomey Abbott, which was behind the hospital, and um, the Sunday before All Saints and All Souls, I told all those elderly people that lived there that they had known so many people in their lives, and on All Saints, they ought to celebrate, maybe go tell one another in different apartments. So I got home probably around 7 o'clock that night, <coughs> All Saints, and I'm seeing all these old people coming out of their rooms with bottles of liquor, bottles of wine. And I said, what's going on? They said, well, we're celebrating all saints. Well, they got the message. And they sat there as they sipped, they talked, they told, and they remembered. It's important for us. We all know that young people, so many, many of them, have dropped off from religion. There are many reasons for that, but the one reason that I maintain is that when they give you the answer, when you say, why don't you go to church, their answer is always, well, it doesn't really touch me. It doesn't make a difference in my life. And when I hear that, I say to myself, what did we do wrong? What are we not doing that will enable a young person later on in life to say, I got something. It touched me. 
We all know that it, it, what I read, what I learn, I can forget. But what I experience, I remember. And so the idea of celebrating feast days, it's important to teach the children that we all gather together as a church, as a family member in this church and reflect upon the feast that we're celebrating and then go home and make a special day. Might be a special meal, might be going out to supper, it might be something, but that's where young people begin to tie in to what it's all about. It becomes practical, meaningful, and celebratory. We all know that uh, the celebration of holidays for us are very important because we learn them from our parents. We have traditions, different traditions. Suppose that uh, your son or daughter who lives out of state and is coming home for Thanksgiving and calls you and you say, oh, by the way, uh, I'm not going to have turkey this Thanksgiving, I'm going to have ham. How do you think that kid's going to react? Well, what? Well, Thanksgiving's turkey for us. Um, they have fond memories. And when you make fond memories, you make people who are fond to be part of those memories. And so it, it can't just stay in the church. It, it needs to go out. Irving Berlin, in one of his songs, has the sentence, we forget to remember. We forget to remember. Learn knowledge doesn't touch our hearts. It's what we remember fondly. So if we really celebrate holy days, we create fond memories. And when you have fond memories, you want to repeat it. What you learn, what you experience, you treasure. It creates memories in the heart. And those are the things that are the most precious. Think about our lives. Think about those special times in our families. Think about how beautiful those memories are. They happened, we didn't forget. We have a warm feeling. So we have to be a church that celebrates, not only at church, because the young people for a period are not understanding, but when they see it celebrated, the truth, they remember and fond memories keeps people together. You know how we do for Christmas, the traditions that we have for Easter, picnics for Memorial Day, uh, picnics for Labor Day. People come together because there's special memories to that. So I think that as we approach these two wonderful days, to be able to see and, and experience those who've gone ahead of us. We all know the expression that um, out of out of mind, out of, out of, out of sight, out of mind. And often, and I've heard people dying say to the children, "Don't forget me." The first year, second year, when we mourn, our hearts are broken. But then we get going, which is we're supposed to do. But then we forget. We forget to go back and to draw from them. It's so different from the news. These people who touched our lives, these families, the, the, uh, grandparents, and aunts and uncles, and all these people that made life for us special, we need to remember, we need to celebrate. Someone has written, I'm no president who needs to have a grand tomb, so bury me in the hearts of the people I've loved. Let my epithet not be chiseled, but chiseled memories of me, treasured by those I've loved. And then he went on to say, may every cemetery remind me that while marble tombstones are nice, memories best honor our dead, resurrecting them to life again. And so, on all saints, we pick then someone or someones who've touched our lives very deeply that we wouldn't be who we are without them. And we remember them. And in remembering them, we celebrate them. And we tell the story to those who we love about the person who touched our lives. Everybody loves a story. And we need young people especially 
need to know about good things because we always are hearing bad things. So on that day, not only do we come then to the Eucharist, this table, but as the table at home now becomes special, the memories we create are the memories that are going to bring people back each year and remember fondly. On the Feast of All Saints, then, I may take a picture out of the persons or persons, maybe put a candle or a flower, but on that day, I remember. And as I remember, I share. And then I celebrate that gift that was given to me. The next day is a day we look back on all the people that we have encountered through our life. It's a journey. You begin in your own home neighborhood, down the streets of the little place, the places where you live, go through the grammar, junior and high school, and on and on, pausing to think about those people who were part of your life, people you knew. Some made big impressions, some made small impressions, but you've knew, known so many people. And as you take this journey um, and try to go through these parts of your life, if you're my age, it takes you three weeks to do that. <laughs> but it's a wonderful thing. There was a, a, a theologian who tried to do it and did it. And when he was asked how it was for him, he said, when I did it, it blew my mind. I had forgotten so many good people that have influenced my life. And so, no one wants to be forgotten. When we remember, people become present, making our remembrances into reunions. So these two days, these of celebration are so important. We can only make them as important as we do Halloween. And Halloween, of course, uh, ultimately was the feast of all of the preparing for the Feast of All Saints. Uh, but of course, it's now it's grown differently, but kids love it, and we love to see the kids enjoying it. Let it go on for two more days to celebrate. I end with a song by uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford, which I shared with you a, a couple of years ago, but I think he put it so well. He called it Precious Memories. We could call the feast of this week Precious Memories. The song goes, Precious Memories, Unseen Angels, Sent from Somewhere to My Soul, How They Linger Ever Near Me, and the Sacred Paths Unfold. Precious Memories, How They Linger, How They Ever Flood My Soul, In the Stillness of the Midnight, Precious, Sacred, Scenes Unfold. Precious Father, Loving Mother, Fly Across the Lonely Years, And Old Home Scenes of My Childhood, and fond memory appears. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious, sacred scenes unfold. And so as we come to these wonderful days, don't let them go away. Don't forget. Enjoy. Celebrate. We need to celebrate good news. We're saturated with bad news. <clears throat> Once again, as a community, as a family of God, we remember and recite the articles of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in time, Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son of the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Living Commanded by love, we come to God with confidence, bringing our concerns for the church, our neighbors, and the world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, bishops, and priests who are our shepherds, that their ministry be blessed many times over from the grace of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that our world leader apply the face of God to their works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, for the homeless, and all who are in need, that they may receive love, respect, and the material assistance that they need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the innocent people in the Middle East harmed by violence or instability, may God's grace sustain and strengthen them and keep them from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the participants in the Synodal Assembly, that the Holy Spirit stir and strengthen their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord For our community of St. Anne's, that the transforming message of the Gospel open our hearts, our souls, and our minds to the needs of our neighbors, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all of those who are sick, May they embrace the comfort of our God, especially for Robert O'Connor, brother of Colleen and Mike Hedges, and for all those listed in our prayer list, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And for all of those who have died, may they find eternal rest in God's kingdom, especially for Bruce Mayberry, for whom this Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And our sanctuary lamp will be burning this week in loving memory of Andy and Albert Agrasto. And now we pray for the intentions that we all offer in the silence of our own hearts. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Living and true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Love Goes On, number 495. Oh, do I get rich in 
Friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and time again, we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your son, our redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope and a desire to be services to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. 
for when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hand, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have blessed, bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that keeps us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop and all your people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, Saint Anne, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, for the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, let us say that prayer that he has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace and the joy of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Our Mass schedule for the All Souls, All Saints days. October 31st for the early bird Mass at 4 p.m. so all moms and dads have time to get dressed up in their costumes to go out with the kids. Um, again, that's 4 p.m. on October 31st. November 1st, All Saints Day, Mass is our typical 9 o'clock Mass in the morning and then 5.30 in the evening. And November 2nd for All Souls Day, the same, we have a 9 o'clock Mass in the morning and 5.30 in the evening. And again, if you'd like to um, have um, one of your members of your family remembered on a candle, at the exits there are still some candle um, um, papers that you can write their name on and they'll be wrapped around a candle for this week coming. Um, also, if you could please review the list of our ministries available here at St. Anne's, um, we're, we're, we're in need of, of, of many ministers and many different types of ministries, such as coffee and donuts. If we can get 30 families, 20 families to sign up, you do it once a year, we could have it once a month. 30 families sign up, we could do it twice a month. Um, it's all really up to us on how many people sign up for that ministry. Also for Christian services and for the bereavement committee, there's lots of different opportunities for everybody here to share who you are in God's eyes with all of us. Okay, listen up, kids. Trunk or treat today at 2.30 in our parking lot. Please come. We have all sorts of cars that will be decorated and treats for everybody. Again, that's 2.30 to 3.30 in our parking lot right here. And then just one last one. Uh, we have the Wax Museum of Saints next Sunday after the 11 o'clock Mass, the kids will dress up as their favorite saints, 
downstairs after the 11 o'clock mass and you can enjoy coffee and cider and donuts. Um, just one more, I guess. The, uh, many of you might already know the uh, diocese put out an announcement late yesterday evening of some changes in, in pastoral leadership. Um, the Father, Welk, Father Walker out of Portland, a parochial vicar, was assigned to, um, as the parish administrator, to our, the parishes just south of us in um, Tully and Otisco, Lafayette, and IC. So he'll be moving up there. And to take his place in Cortland, Father Malachi, our parochial vicar for Holy Family and our help, will be assigned to Cortland. So what wasn't announced was who will replace Father Malachi for us, but as soon as that happens, we will let you know. Father Malachi's last day, and he's been just such a wonderful addition to our parish. His last weekend here will be November 11th and 12th. So when you see him, wish him well on his new assignment. And let us pray. <laughs> May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in sign, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now on the Let us go in peace. Our closing hymn this morning is 479, Love One Another. Mm -hmm. 